Good morning, Commissioner. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Take your seats. Commissioners, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. I need a motion to adopt the agenda moving item 8A after item number 6. Motion by Drulette, supported by Carabelli. All those, uh, please vote. Very good. Need item number 4, approval of the minutes of dated May 14th, 2008. Need a motion by, supported by Drulette, supported by Sauger. Any discussion or questions? Please vote to approve those. Thank you very much. Public participation. Anyone from the public here wish to be heard? Anyone from the public here wish to be heard? Anyone from the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, we'll close public participation. Okay. Item six is a tribute honoring Macomb County Public Works uh, for receiving the American Public Works Association Project of the Year. First, I need a motion to receive and file for the record. Motion by Carabelli, supported by Sauger. Um, we're very honored. Uh, have uh, accolades brought to our county by our Public Works uh, Commissioner, Congressman Candace Miller. Um, Pardon me? Your tribute's up. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're well, you put it on the agenda. Yes. What do you want me to say? Yes. Well, <laughs> well we want to. We want Thank to, you. <laughs> we're really appreciative of the honor that you brought Macomb County through the, the outstanding work that you've done. It, it's made national acclaim, and uh, it's just another. First of many uh, records are going to be coming to our county and attributes of the work you're doing over there, and we um, we appreciate it. We have a the board of commissioners taking note of that, and we've uh, presented a, we have a special uh, presentation we'd like to give you. Okay. Do you have enough room in your office that. for that, Ms. Miller? <laughs> Why don't y'all come on behind? How about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Come on. All right. Come on down. All right. Where are we going? Oh, okay. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. Don is always chosen for pictures. Exactly. <laughs> okay, right here looking at me. One, two, three. Let's see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, other uh, you know, 
mostly engineers, really. Mostly the engineers are looking at the project. And some of the fine some of the people on the committee are finance people. And uh, they look at how we're financed and, and they, they have a whole bunch of criteria that they go through. So we are actually winning the national award for a project in our category. And uh, I, I think I can say it's never happened in the Cone County before. Uh, I don't think there's been one in Michigan, actually, before. But I, uh, maybe. We can't find one. So uh, I think that, uh, that speaks well to this project. You know, as all of you know, when that uh, thing happened, uh, there was a lot of talk it's going to be a two-year project. This is going to be $150 million. I mean, those numbers were wild, right? No one really knew. So I think it's uh, uh, of note that uh, actually that project was completed in less than a year, in less than a year, not two years, in less than a year. And then as far as the budget, uh, rather than 150, it actually ended up being 70 million. Uh, so we have uh, about $5 million left over, to tell you the truth, uh, which we need every penny of it because since that time, yeah, no, no ideas here, Mr. Chair, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take it back. We're going to assume the budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> But since that time, we have inspected the whole rest of the, the MIT, that particular drainage district, the Macomb University drainage district, just about 17 miles of pipe that we've inspected. No surprise, there's issues, a lot of issues. We're going to need a lot more than $5 million. But uh, we need to uh, go at a good speed. We're going to be doing some other things to, uh, to look at uh, trying to get some, uh, some cash. As many of you know, we own the northwest uh, corner of uh, N59 in Garfield. We intend to have a public auction on that property uh, in probably in uh, October maybe. Because right now I have 30 in the unit for sage and they're going on 59. I keep telling them, listen, man, I've got to sell this land. He says, well, not yet. We're almost done, you know. But uh, we want to be a good neighbor. We want to get N59 done. But I mean, that uh, property, I would say $4 million is the floor of the ceiling. So that'll also be, uh, all that money will go back into the mix. So, uh, but anyway, we're, we're delighted to, uh, to have that project uh, work out so well. And others uh, that we're doing in our department. And uh, I tell you what, as all of you know, you don't do it in a vacuum. You have to have a team. It takes everybody. Everybody to help. And uh, the board of commissioners has been fantastic with us. And you guys helped us with the, when we had, we came in here when I first got this job. I'm like begging for money out of the delinquent tax revolving fund. Fortunately, there's a former summer treasurer on here that has some money there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, thank you for all of that help. And, uh, and of course, pledging full pledging credit for the county saved us a lot of money for, uh, for our uh, abilities. It's about as good as this, we can tell you. You can square hurry up and get up there because that's going to be a big uh, component of it. And, uh, and I have a great team in my department also. And I would just close by saying Glenn Shaker is my chief deputy. And uh, as Joe knows, he's, he's, a, he's, my, he's a great finance guy. Everybody on my team and my, my staff and I have been great. And honestly, you don't get these awards if we had great contractors, we had great engineers, we had the staff in my office, everybody. So it takes everybody to have a, a part of this. So thank you so much for recognizing us. Well, it's, it's so easy. You know, it's, it's, so, it's so transparent. Everything you've done has been transparent since day one. There's been no secrets about what you're doing. You got into a big problem, totally everyone the truth. It's a major problem. We could have really serious issues here. You totally run honest and upfront with the public every step along the way, and the way you continue your business from, since then. It's just been transparent, and it goes a long way to building goodwill and collective will of the board to work together with you. When people don't understand what's going on, they keep secrets like had been done in the past. People are reluctant to come on board and help because they don't know all the details, what's behind the door. And uh, you've been just a fresh breath of fresh air, and uh, um, we're very lucky to have you in the county helping us along. And you've got great employees there. They, Many of them have been there for many years, and you're lucky to have them. They're good to have a good leader to help them support what they've done. You brought in excellent staff, so just uh, nothing but good things to say, and uh, let's keep it going. On to the next big project. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much. That concludes that. Item number seven is department recommendations. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. We need number 8A. Excuse me. There's speakers on this oh. item. Oh. Well, there were. That us? Well, okay. that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Number 8A. Um, resolution uh, 
18 uh, 637 pledging full faith and credit of the North Gratiot Interceptor. It's a Lenox, a local drainage district. Um, need a motion. Uh, if, if I could, Mr. Chairman, just please. a quick thing, and then I'd like to have Brian Baker well, just, gonna, just, yeah. just. We're going to get a motion on the floor oh, first, okay. and then we'll. Sure. So moved by Commissioner Kraft, supported by Commissioner uh, Lucido. Well, <laughs> oh, good. This uh, item, we're asking for the county to uh, pledge their full faith and credit for a refinancing for a bond issue. One of the things that we've been doing, uh, <clears throat> actually, when we, uh, when we financed the MID project, uh, we did a refinance of the existing uh, outstanding uh, uh, money for the bonds for that particular project. I think we saved about, uh, I want to say, six and a half million over the remainder of the 18 years for that by just a refinancing with the low, lower interest rate. And Brian Baker uh, has been looking through every bond issue that's been outstanding and when they could be callable and if there's an opportunity for us to finance, refinance some of these bonds. This is a particular, it's called the Lennox Local, and he's going to speak to this. But um, this particular uh, bond issue, uh, if we call it now and, uh, and refi, we think we could save the township of Lennox what is the population of the township of Lenox? Uh, not much, yeah, I've, I've, I forget, but it's not very big, as you know, and we think we can save them about $737,000 of interest. So uh, the township uh, passed their resolution saying that they obviously were very supportive of this, but we do need the county's full faith and credit to be pledged. And if I could, I'm gonna ask uh, Brian Baker just to speak a little bit more in detail to it. That'd be fine. Thanks. Well, Candace has stole my thunder. Um, as she said, we have uh, identified another bond refinancing opportunity. That is now our third refinancing opportunity. We've saved, oh, about $7 million now between the mid, the OMID, and now this NGI, which is the Lennox local portion of the NGI. So these were bonds, a little over $15 million that was financed back in 2007. And by refunding it, we can save about $700,000 for Lennox. Um, we're asking you to reaffirm your, the county's full faith and credit pledge. So it's, it's nothing you haven't already pledged on the original bonds, but this will allow us to um, get the best bond rating possible and the lowest interest rate. And y the county has historically done this, and all bond and, and debt uh, issuance costs are, of course, paid by Lennox. There's no impact to the county general fund, of course, unless they default, but in the unlikely event that they do default, no community has defaulted, uh, the county treasurer has um, authorization to take the necessary steps to make sure they collect any of the unpaid funds. And with that, we do have the uh, financial advisor here to answer any of your questions, but uh, we look forward to uh, the selling of bonds in July. Are you reamortizing the, the loan or are you, are you shortening same, the term? Same term, same term, it's still gonna expire in 2031, 25 year bond. Thank you. Yep. Um, Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Chair. Brian, as you know me, it's always about the money. <laughs> always about the money. Are there other bonds that you're looking at? You mentioned other bonds that you're looking at. Is there something that you can share with us that there are other municipalities that have these bonds out that you're looking at the possibility of, of savings for them also? Well, we've done three already. <laughs> we, we've done the mid, which we've have successfully refinanced the OMID, the, the county a couple months ago you guys gave us that authority we're going through that we think only about a hundred thousand dollars now there are some new haven bonds that are out that out there but we are waiting for them to complete and submit their audit to the state before we can get that done that is the next one on our our hurdle or on our radar the hurdle of course is getting their capper done in time so thank you that's all i have thanks chair <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, you said that this was originally done in 2007? Correct. What percentage rate was it paying and what percentage rate are we going to be paying now? Looking or are at the people of Lennox going to be paying? Yeah, they were in the four, four and a quarter range. Yeah. And we hope we can get it in the three, little three and a half range or so. Okay. So over the course of uh, one percentage point adds up to that. That's and, right. And over these are all 25-year uh, bonds? This was a 25-year bond that um, we're already into it. 
uh, 11 years. So it go still until 2031. So another um, 13, 14 13, years? 14 years. Yeah. All right. Um, are most of the, are, what's the time frame of the bonds that you're looking at? Are they all in around 2007, 2008 in that area or earlier or later or? This bond that we're speaking to right now? No, or the, the, the other ones that you're looking at. The New Haven was part of that NGI, so it was a very similar time frame. All right. All right. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to thank you, Commissioner Miller, Brian, the rest of the team. You're taking care of my district. This is fantastic. I love it. Um, but I just I just wanted to hop on and say thank you very much for taking a look at these and seeing what's viable, what's doable. And I know this is going to save the people of Lenox a lot of money. And if you do get down to New Haven, same thing. If you want to keep going to Chesterfield and New Baltimore, I wouldn't be mad about it. But just wanted to thank you guys. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item seven, a budget amendment for information technologies. Uh, we have a director here today, uh, Jacob. You please uh, speak to you the uh, amendment. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, <clears throat> the IT department is uh, requesting an addition of a full-time staff member in uh, the uh, classification of database administrator in order to provide reliable and dedicated support services for our database infrastructure in the county. Uh, current sta staffing levels in IT um, are not enough to provide consistent, reliable, and dedicated support services for over 50 relational databases that we have in the county. This position has been given up in 2008 um, when the county requested bud budget cuts from the department um, or from the departments. Um, but the landscape since then have changed significantly. Uh, highly important, important related support roles, for example, database optimization, database maintenance, setting data and standards and enforcing those standards as well as ensuring that data are being protected at rest as well as in transit in our environment um, are not being addressed consistently. It is also a mission critical role as we start uh, our road towards big data. We cannot continue to view data in silos in the county, um, <clears throat> but rather need to aggregate our data sources which means that that will allow us to pursue data analytics so that we can provide better services to our uh, customers, our citizens, as well as our communities. It is an essential step in our journey to build out a more data-focused environment for the future. The new position will require a budget amendment to increase the IT operational budget in salaries and fringe benefits uh, line item with an amount of uh, 53,362 uh, for the remainder of this year. And then uh, that's derived from 106,717 total annual cost for the year. Thank you. Uh, as you may be aware, the board is, uh, appreciates the position that you, that you want to offer, and we understand that. Uh, there are some questions about the uh, other issues related to the general personnel policies of the county. Um, my view is we'd like to pass this and send it on to the Finance Committee where we'll ultimately make that decision if we get information from HR that says it's uh, that they, they, they concur that with the, uh, with the personnel study that they just released. Um, so um, we have uh, Commissioner Carabelli is not to speak, so please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Jayco. I appreciate it. Um, 
just to piggyback a little bit on what Commissioner Brown had said, we've asked everybody that's came up for uh, the new position is to um, this Thursday, Wednesday, this Wednesday, um, those will be on the Finance Committee uh, okay. for approval. And prior to that or the day of, um, we're asking that the uh, uh, each petitioner that's coming up for a new position uh, gets a concurrence from HR, a letter from HR saying, yes, we agree with, agree with the classification, and yes, we agree with the um, uh, compensation range. Okay. So it, it's, uh, and I think we sent that out. I don't know if everybody received it, or if they haven't yet, we'll be sending it to you if you haven't gotten it. Again, just a, a signed letter from HR saying compensation uh, range and classification. She signs off on it, then it can go on to finance. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Gillette. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Jacob, for the presentation. Um, you've been out operating without this, pers uh, this position for about 10 years, is that correct? Uh, probably around about that time, yes. Okay. And you've described at sort of a macro level what kind of work that person would need to be doing. Um, but can you tell me how uh, adding the position will um, actually make a difference for other employees or for other or projects that we're working on? In other words, we, we, it'd be interesting to be able to see what adding the person would do, would actually do as far as productivity or what types of projects will be done quicker. Or if we don't add the person, what bad thing will happen? Yeah. So uh, the basis when you when you uh, in a you know database environment like like we are today, uh, making sure that your traditional base uh, databases are up and running and running well, there's really uh, a few things, but probably one of the biggest components is maintenance of databases, and usually you need specialized talent to do that. There are some databases, some simpler databases that's pretty easy to do, and we probably have the in-house talent, and we do use that talent as far as possible. But when you come to your larger systems, like on-base enterprise-type systems, you really need a database administrator to be able to do that. And on-base, for, uh, for example, is a very good example of that. We, um, uh, one of our staff members is a uh, you know pretty good database administrator himself, but he's not uh, he's not in that position. He's a business system analyst, and uh, we started working, for instance, in uh, uh, the on-base environment, and we're able to. And this happened uh, over the December January time frame. Uh, you know, complaints of slow database performance and things like that, and that's the type of thing that typically happens when you don't maintain your database as well. You know, re-indexing, making sure you clean up your database, it's, it's tasks that you have to perform on a regular basis. And uh, for instance, we were able to, after about two months of dedicating this person to that and working on it, was able to resolve that and it really significantly increased the, the speed of the database. So, but you're sort of making the argument that you've been able to do all these things already. The I thing mean, is with we are, the with we are we doing these things. The person that we use to do that is our business system analyst for the sheriff's department. Okay. So now, when we look at things like that, those things fall behind. That makes it very, very difficult. And when us. they fall behind, what happens? When they fall behind, we we cannot uh, deliver the type of services that we nor normally deliver to for instance, the Sheriff's Department. Okay, and so what happens at the Sheriff's Department when that service is not delivered in a timely manner? Uh, it, there's a you know, vast amount of different uh, things that can happen. So specifically when it comes to uh, analysis and things that need to be done for specific projects, those are the type of things that would uh, suffer, the, suffer the first. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Thank you, Chair. Um, when you create a position of this nature, uh, do you create a salary range, um, as uh, Commissioner Carabelli was speaking of, or did you, do you just create a salary? Um, uh, I relied on the finance department to do this, and the reason being that that position existed about 10 years ago as part okay. of our union agreement. The position was still listed there, and I think they just uh, adjusted the scale over time so that it's in line with the other position. Okay, so have. the 77,954 that would be the year-long salary, 
Um, are you are you budgeting it just automatically budgeting at the top end of the range, but you're not necessarily going to hire at the top end, or um, are, is this budgeting in the middle of that range? What was the actual salary range for the position? The salary range I cannot give you at this point in time. I can definitely send that to you. Okay. Uh, in, so in the next day. So when um, you contacted finance, did they come back to you with a salary range, or did they come back to you with a salary number? Uh, just this number. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. No other speakers on this item. Uh, need a motion to send it to finance. Moved by Commissioner Sauger, supported by Commissioner Lucido. Uh, please vote. Motion passes with nine to one. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you next Thank later you. this week. <laughs> Item seven uh, B: uh, Budget Amendment from Planning and Economic Development. Um, we have John Paul Ria, Director of the Planning, here to present his issues. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Appreciate the opportunity. Commissioners, always a pleasure to be here. Um, uh, if I may speak real quick to uh, the efforts of Jayco and the database administrator, uh, I just want to applaud his efforts not only being able to assist us with some of our technical elements in our GIS system, but as we look at scaling up in the digital age and ensuring that we have platforms that could be more robust, I think the direction that they're taking is beneficial not only to the services that we want to provide, but I think more importantly to the services that the citizens expect. So shout out to you, Jayco. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I am here uh, as Jayco and a number of other of my departmental counterparts to uh, request for some additional resources and staffing. And I know it's difficult not only from a board perspective but from an administrator's perspective of how we rate on par the difference between a database administrator, an associate planner, or someone that might give the kid a flu shot. So in no way, shape, or form am I here to say that I'm more important than everyone else. But from a department and planning and economic development perspective, I just want to give you some sheer numbers. Uh, we try to justify everything that we do as far as direct action on the community. In a community with over 870,000 individuals, a workforce of about 433,000 folks, an unemployment rate of about 3.1%, and upwards of 12 people every single day coming to Macomb County, we have all these macro level trends which get us to believe, realize, and understand that there's a value add to this county. There's some macroeconomic factors that are making this a favorable place for people to come and live as income keeps increasing and as home valuation keeps increasing, and also with the prosperity for businesses. But last year alone, our team engaged over 850 different business interactions. And the number one need from all those businesses with all these fantastic trends is talent. We are dying on the vine when it comes to talent, and I think it's reaching a critical mass. So the ask that I'm here for you is not only to illustrate how by using an additional staff member can we assist these businesses not only with scaling up in talent, but being that, conve that key convening agent that can bring all the partners together. As we sit here today, there are more than 17,000 jobs open in Macomb County. And every single day with the businesses that we interact with and with our economic development partners, we are developing new and inventive ways to incubate talent here in Macomb County. And it truly begins with the relationship in our communications and strategic outreach group, where we expect this individual to be placed. This individual would be a part of that team, not only to help us engage all those great economic development opportunities that we have, but to develop that service platform that showcases how if you are a business that chooses to invest here in Macomb County, we can develop a tailor-made list of talent services that will ensure that your investment will be incredibly more sustainable down the future. Whether it's someone needing to scale up and hire 200 more individuals and showcasing that those job opportunities are here, whether it's working with an existing company, whether it's in manufacturing, whether it's construction and landscaping, whether it's on the professional service side, it's understanding as our, as our community grows, as our educational attainment rises, there needs to be an organization that people look to to take all of these concentrated efforts and focus that on purposeful business actions. And I think now more than anything with the technical resources and the knowledge base that we have, we have that in our department. 
An additional staff member in this group would not only help facilitate those macro level initiatives, whether it's continuing the facilitation of the largest manufacturing day event in the entire nation, where this year alone we're trying to engage more than 7,000 students and over nine dozen businesses to showcase folks what future generational careers look like. Whether it's engaging the Ford Motor Company up in the village of Romeo with Ford Next Generation Learning, where we're doing a better job of connecting classrooms to careers. Whether it's developed other academy-based programming, whether it be in Utica, Warren Consolidated, or Centerline Schools. But most importantly, it's engaging with those existing service partners. How we develop more dynamic relationships with our ISD and the McComb Community College as the state of Michigan looks to deploy $100 million under the Marshall Plan for Talent. There is a need there for us to continue to skill up the existing workers that we have, but develop a better network of coordinated partners to show the state of Michigan. You have this Marshall Plan for Talent, but frankly, it's in action here in Macomb County. We hear the governor, Roger Curtis, leadership at the MEDC, talking about early adopters and those that are doing these things. We're doing them here in Macomb County. We want to showcase that we're doing them better, and we want to fight for those resources that we haven't been able to tackle. That's the need that's in our department. I'd be more than happy to answer any additional questions with regards to the financial impact and the discussions that we've had with finance and HR. It falls in line not only with existing classifications that we have under the class and compensation study, it's an existing job classification that goes apart across all of our work sectors where we're looking at creating standardization, not only as far as eight-year career pathways, but also professional development paths, and we feel that we're on a pretty stable foundation. Thank you. Is this an entry level position? It would start off as an entry level position, but one of the things that we're looking at is working with HR with the class and compensation. When we bring someone into our department, we're trying to establish an eight-year career pathway. Historically within our department, as someone has come in here and gotten the notoriety, they've always viewed this as a stepping stone, whether they went and got a job with the state or with the regional chamber. What we're doing with individuals that we bring in is we're showing them not through just the standard increment adjustments that we get, we also provide them an opportunity to look for professional development and career opportunities as far as advanced certifications to be a certified planner, to be a certified economic development specialist, to be a project management specialist. And because we've understand the nuances of all the career segmentations we're in, we're working with human resources to look at an eight-year career pathway that would give an associate that comes in our department at the lowest level four years as an associate, four years as a planner, working those increment adjustments, having each step be based on merit and performance, whether it's them going out and getting an advanced degree, whether it's a master's, or them going out and getting out a professional certification from cert some, some industry accepted certifications, whether it's an AICP, an IEDC, uh, a GIS specialist, or some of the other ones we're looking at too. Thank you. Jim, Commissioner Kirbelli. Thank you, and thank you for hitting on that with uh, the classification and compensation. Yes, All we're asking for every department um, is to get a letter from HR signed saying that yes, this falls within the classification that and the um, uh, compensation uh, range. So I'll rest for everybody on that. Appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Chair. How are we doing today? Hi. Do you have somebody in mind for this position? No, sir. Um, the good thing is, is because the department has a considerable amount of notoriety in the field of planning and economic development, we've gotten some pretty robust candidates. Um, we just recently posted a position where right off the bat we had over 137 candidates that were pre-screened by HR. We were able down to select that to about 60 some odd, and then from that we had about 25 in our first preferred list, and we actually interviewed the most we've ever interviewed for a position, and that was six individuals. So we're taking personnel very seriously, and we're looking for people that want to invest in us as we want to invest in them. Would qualify somebody for an associate as an associate planner. I think what the credentials. Yeah, I think the key is is a bachelor's degree in an economic development planning or associated public administration field. We've really refined through the class and compensation study our job descriptions, titles, and classifications. We think that's really helped us to zero in on those folks. But then also on the preferred list, we're looking individuals that have advanced degrees, whether it's in masters, also advanced certifications in the field too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. <coughs> Thank you. How many associate planners do you currently have? Currently we have four associate planners. Okay. And what is the salary range? 
plus or minus a few dollars. I believe it starts at 46 and change and tops out just under 60,000, if I'm not okay. mistaken. But okay. it is an existing classification that's in the class. Right, study. right. So, so, okay, so we're budgeting at the, uh, at the top end, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna start out at the top end, Un correct? Undoubtedly, that is something that I have to give a tremendous amount of credit to HR is that we look at the skill set that the individual brings in and at, to this point in time, we've never been above, I believe, step six within any salary grade that we brought someone else. So we're very mindful of that. How too. many steps are there? Twelve, I believe, within. Okay, any. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gillette. Don't quote me on that, but I can figure it out. Sorry, <laughs> I don't work in HR. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we, you're hearing from the business community and so forth that uh, our the challenge for them is finding talent. Undoubtedly. Um, but the department doesn't train the talent, so this person would be trying to find a way to connect people. The business can't find them themselves. We help them find them, or we're encouraging people to go to get trained, or all of the above. Um, right before I came here, we met with a company up in the greater Romeo area that said to us, I don't have the time, effort, or energy to reach out to the local school districts, the Macomb Community College, the ISD, and the local talent agency. Our response, our job, and our role in that is we bring all those key conveners into one meeting, not only illustrate here's the leader of the CTE program that has this many welders, that has this many kids in the machining program that are looking at career opportunities. We then would bring in Macomb St. Clair Works, put together a tailor-made job training program that would say, okay, you're bringing in this line of business where you need to skill up 12 people on this new line of machines that you're bringing in. Here's the training program, which is going to cost X. Here's the Y incentive that can come from St. Clair Works, and here's the Z amount of people that we're going to bring in at this cost. We are building these tailor-made programs with all these different service providers on the fly. And the main thing is, is that as we reach critical mass with the fact that the average age of an individual involved in a manufacturing field is 56, we're about to fall off a generational cliff and we are pushing on all fronts to develop organic solutions here to the talent issues that we have. So have we been able to boost the total number of people going into the manufacturing uh, community in the last 10 years? I think we've not only been able to stabilize the amount of individuals that need jobs, but the need is growing by leaps and bounds as companies increase production and as the demand is there. As we look at still uh, auto sales up in the 17 million, as we look at the deployment of more than one point eight billion dollars of defense contracts in our community as we look at the emergence of aerospace people are looking towards our community and they're scaling up in ways we have never thought robotics and automation are going to be a key variable in solving that equation mm -hmm. but frankly we just need more people that are going to skill up and build things better faster and stronger right so the, the problem obviously isn't somebody with a uh, experience in welding or experience in robotics finding a job that's not a problem no no uh, the issue is getting more people to like look for those to, to get gain those skills mm -hmm. and the county does a um, adds value to that in some capacity these people would not be going into robotics or not be going into welding if it wasn't for something that our department was doing commissioner I would challenge any other department of planning and economic development in the entire state if not the nation to illustrate the knowledge that we have at the industries that we're working in I think we are possibly doing it better than anyone else. We are giving people a comprehensive snapshot of where these industries are going. We are working with industry and trade partners that are leaders in Industry 4.0 and advanced manufacturing to showcase where industry is going next and how we need to skill up as quickly as physically possible. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm no other speakers. Oh, again, oh, I'm very okay. Thank you, Jim. Sorry, yeah, just a quick point, point of information on that note, and those are great questions, Leon. I've seen firsthand, I've been at some of these uh, synergy groups that he's had and some of these events that when they turn around and your school, your school, high school used to have wood shop and metal shop, um, and then all of a sudden they would throw in um, automotive repair. It's now changed that they're working with the ISD and they're taking these CNC classes and stuff and dropping it now into the high school because the demand the high schools have no idea. So he's grabbing the business people want to come to the community, understanding those needs, getting to the educators through the process of getting the next generation trained for the types of jobs that they're recruiting here in our county. So can you imagine the gap that we have? And there is a gap out there, but I've seen what they've done and I've seen that they're not being done as efficiently as we are in Macomb County and the other tri-county area right around us. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's like night and day in some of the stuff that I'm seeing. 
it, it, it'll actually boggle your mind. I asked you to go invite him to one of the next time you guys have one of those, uh, I forgot what it was called. Um, yeah, the manufacturing day is the big no, one. No, not the manufacturing day. At Macomb Community College, you had a, uh, a group of business leaders, schools, and everybody, and it was. Oh, that was the, that was actually part of the manufacturing day uh, pre-planning events where we bring in, we do the matchmaking with the businesses and the superintendents and the employers and the parents. And to show what the needs are of the industries so they can be trained as they're coming out of school. So I, I didn't mean to belabor that. No, that's fine. The program that they have is. Before, you should have this program. Pardon? How did people find jobs <laughs> before this, you have this department? Well, how, how they found the jobs? Well, the requirements weren't there. So some, some companies were required OSHA 10, OSHA 40, OSHA 80. Right. Well, guess what? They needed to hire people because they want to get up and running. Well, all of a sudden now you got to send people out for two months and you can't start your company because they're trying to hire the people. I mean, I can give you a lot of examples of why it's, it's so much better now and that's why companies are locating here, because we have the workforce that are being produced right here. Thank you. Anybody else? Please vote. You have no motion yet? Okay. Need a motion, Commissioner Romano, supported by Commissioner Duje. Please vote. Thank you very much. Motion passed. You can live to fight another day. All right. Thank Appreciate you. it, Commissioners. Always a pleasure. Have a nice day. Pleasant terms. Item 10. Uh, uh, item C, a contract with uh, Z Contractors, Kelly Road, Harrington, uh, Drain, Director Rhodes, you're up. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, seeking approval of a uh, construction contract with Z Contractors for Kelly Road over the Harrington Drain, which is a superstructure uh, replacement. It's a section of Kelly Road um, between 15 and 16 in Clinton Township. The <coughs> Z Contractors was the low bid uh, at an amount of Three hundred seventy-six thousand nine hundred ninety-two dollars and seventy-eight cents. Very good. Is everyone's in order? Any questions on this? Need a motion to approve? Moved by Gillette, supported by Romano. Please vote. Thank you very much. The motion passed. Um, item D: Limestone cost share agreement. Our made the township. That's, you see the information on our agendas, commissioners. Uh, got the th three roads, three miles. It's yes, actually, if you look in your packet, it, it should be uh, seven different communities. Uh, there should be seven cost share agreements. Um, the top one was um, Armada. obviously um, Armada Township, but we have uh, Armada Township, um, Bruce. Washington, Chesterfield, um, Lennox. So there's seven different communities. Um, is that in your packet? Because it should be all seven. So uh, it's basically our typical limestone program. Uh, we basically offer three miles to the northern communities uh, of their selection uh, just to ensure that it makes sense and we can feasibly do it. Um, you know, we review their requests uh, and make sure that we can facilitate the construction in limestone placement sometimes they select roads that are narrower or have a, a tree canopy so uh, we kind of review those but these are the um, ones that we move forward with as far as approval for the different townships so seeking approval on the uh, cost share agreements for those seven communities motion by Carabelli supported by Mr. Romano Commissioner Romano any questions on this Commissioner Sauger yeah Brian on I took a ride up north on uh, Irwin Road, the west of uh, North Avenue. <coughs> that is that ever in in your uh, uh, schedule to do that limestone on the road? That was pretty bad. I I saw a couple. Of, I did. I stopped to talk to a couple of farmers up there. They says, "Can something ever be done?" You know, and I just thought I'd relay it to you. So that was Irwin Road, west of North Avenue. Yeah. Is that correct? I can definitely check on that for you, Commissioner, okay, and uh, see. Um, 
you know, obviously our uh, maintenance department, you know, monitors different roadways along the way, but I can definitely check on this section. And to just to add, there's no signal lights up there, so don't have to worry about signal lights. <laughs> Perfect. Commissioner Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was talking to some of my local officials in Chesterfield that had some concerns about the program um, and the way you lay the limestone. There was nothing in the contract about doing the crown method. I just wanted to double check and reiterate. I know I've spoken to Leo, I've spoken to Vince. I just wanted to reiterate it together with you um, that that was their concern. And when I was looking over the documents, I didn't see it in there either. So I didn't know if that was just the best practice that you guys go off of and that's just standard procedure or what. So I just wanted to ask you about that real quick. Yes, uh, that definitely is a standard practice and procedure as far as crowning the road. Okay. Um, obviously, if you can't drain a road, uh, I don't care what kind of product you have on it, right. uh, it's not going to last too long. So okay. I just yes. wanted to reiterate that for them. So thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For sure. Chair. You're welcome, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Motion has been made and supported. Of everyone, please vote. Thank you. Motion passes. Item uh, E, uh, the bypass item of Florence Cement Company, left-hand turn lane on Mound Road, 23 Mile Road. You want to speak on that? Turn the speaker on, it helps. Um, this is for improvements uh, on Mound Road, south of 23 Mile Road, uh, extending a left turn lane uh, to facilitate uh, better traffic flow, uh, obviously in preparation for uh, the uh, improved space on the, the southeast corner of 23 and Mound as far as the Amazon uh, facility. Uh, looking at the uh, projections of traffic increase in volumes uh, to best facilitate traffic flow through that uh, section of, of roadway. So um, seeking approval for that contract with Florence Cement. Very good. We have a motion, a motion by Sauger, supported by Aduje. Any questions, Commissioner Carabelli? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Where are we talking a left turn lane? Because they all have left turn lanes. When we improved uh, 23 Mile Road years back, uh, we improved the intersection of 23 Mound and as a normal practice, we go north and south of the intersection, basically to put a, a right turn lane in, and we have a five lane cross section that goes a few hundred feet south of 23 Mile Road on Mound. Um, the left turn lane is a full left turn lane through that full five lane concrete section, and then it tapers back down two lanes south of there. Um, with the developments that are occurring there, we're extending that left turn lane down farther to the south to accommodate uh, a lot of the turning movements for the employee access to the facility for Amazon. Uh, there's gonna be a significant number of traffic trips generated uh, to get into that area and, and, and the normal volumes will increase. So we're looking at not creating a bottleneck in the future as far as that's concerned. No, I, I appreciate the pre-planning and that's, that's awesome, but my question is, is usually when a development goes in, um, the developer of that piece of property will take care of the um, Excel and decel lanes and uh, so forth. And I'm just wondering why, because maybe it's an existing site is why we're doing it. Well, th there's a lot of different parties that are involved with this location and area. Uh, I know Shelby Township has participated. I know the development itself uh, is looking at improving uh, on their behalf and cost the signal uh, where their proposed entrance is going to be off of 23 mile or across from the fire station. Uh, that whole cost is, is born on the development. Okay, and that's why I'm asking, because I mm -hmm. didn't know about those other improvements until yes. you just said them now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank so. you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, any other questions? Thank you, Commissioner. We need a motion to approve. Do we have a motion? Okay, all those please vote. Thank you very much. That concludes your portion of the program. Thank you, Commissioner. Have a nice afternoon. Item number nine is a correspondence, uh, A through D. Uh, Commissioner Drupal moves in their entirety. Is there support for that? Support by Commissioner Kraft. Any discussion, any of those? We need a motion to uh, please vote to approve or disapprove. Those items are approved.
Motion's been uh, received and filed. Item 10 is new business. Just want to make a mention that there was a request from the Department of Roads for a, a vehicle maintenance, a vehicle maintenance facility that um, they had wanted approved, and uh, the information wasn't provided to us in enough time for the agenda. So I held that off the agenda until we get full information from them. So this is a, if you hear about something later on, um, we just held it off until we get all the information. We didn't, Commissioner Carabelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Under uh, new business, uh, everybody received, God bless you, everybody received an email from uh, the deputy executive and there was a response while you were sitting here from Patty on my behalf and it basically says that I had spoke to Deputy Delden um, a short while ago about the delinquent tax revolving fund uh, from the Department of, Department of Roads loan issue and agenda item. In summary, as you all know, from the board chair's email last week, the OCE submitted an agenda item in the agenda management system with the purpose of the MOU and proposed resolution attached. Several parties reviewed the OCE's proposal document. Revisions were made. Ult ultimately, uh, the revision of the MOU and revised resolution document were uh, found acceptable by the tr uh, Treasurer Raka and, Pat and uh, by Bond Council, um, Assistant Corporation Council and Finance. These documents were uploaded into the agenda management system for consideration at the Finance Committee meeting to be held on Wednesday, June 13. Deputy Delden suggested that further dialogue uh, would uh, be productive and request that the item be removed from the June 13 Finance Committee meeting until conversation between the OCE, Treasurer, BOC, and Corporation Council takes place. Per Deputy Delden's request, the DTRF, DOR loan slash MOU, and adopting resolution will be postponed from consideration this week to a committee meeting in the future. Very good. Thank you for the information. I appreciate the time on this. Thank you. Any other new business? Mr. Kleinfeld. I just want to let everybody know that the uh, Michigan Association of Counties Board of Directors meeting will be at the DIA Thursday morning at 9 a.m. I'm sure all of your bright, shiny faces will be there. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know they're in town. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Graff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to thank the staff for all the help with Yoga at the Hill on Saturday. It's a pretty good turnout considering the weather, probably about 150 people. Commissioner Brown was there, Commissioner Romano, Commissioner Leonetti and I did some yoga, Commissioner Kleinfeld took some pictures of us. Um, but it was a good time. And to use it at an appropriate time during the election. Yes, but I just wanted to thank the staff for all the hard work that they did, and Patty, and, and um, looking forward to it next year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, staff did an outstanding job, and a lot of organization, a lot of moving parts there, and they, they all deserve a they deserve a heartfelt thanks for what they've done. A lot of parts, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. Any other new business? Seeing no new business, I need a motion to adjourn. Oh, public participation. Public participation. Anyone from the public wish to be heard? Anyone from the public? Anyone from the public? We close public. Commissioner Gillette? Supported by Duje. Please vote. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon.